Now, you've seen little Paul on social media wearing it this morning. Has the picture of Alistair arrived yet? There's Paul wearing it. We've also got uh, how, uh, how else you can wear it. We've got, uh, uh, it'll come during the show. It'll come up during the show. Basically, CL has made a certain size and we're just showing you the, di the different sizes on different body shapes. That's obviously on petite. Uh, and then we'll see it on Alistair, who's not petite. Petite goes height, by the way, not... No, height, not width. Oh, Alistair's just come... <laughs> anyway, CL's with us, everybody. CL's with us to show you how to make uh, this lovely Ron Collins bomber jacket. Now, I've got it in two sizes. We've got it from 34 to 40 chest size. But I will, uh, will ask CL about how, how, it, how big it comes up. So that's 34 to 40 chest size. Ron Collins, obviously a very, very famous Canadian designer, works a lot with Janome. And he works with, a lot with um, CL's friend, whose name I can't remember at the moment. Sandra Betsina. Sandra Betsina, that's it, thank you. Sandra Betsina. 14.99. The Vogue pattern. Works a lot with Vogue, does Ron. Okay, now I've got exactly the same pattern. In, uh, this one is 40 to 46 chest. 40 to 46 chest, this one. 14.99. Men's bomber jacket. Well, you see, we called it a men's bomber jacket, but I, we, you didn't try it on, did you? No. You know what I mean? As in, I think it could be a unisex. unisex that's the word I was looking for. Oh, Jess in the office wants it, but 14.99. Right, now I've got fabrics to make it out of. Now this one here is made out of this gorgeous gray quilted fabric. No, that's mild gray. Well, what they call the other gray. Oh, okay, no, that is light gray then. No, no, tubing fabric's different, Paul. That's the same thing. So in the quilting, I've got blue, black, the darker grey and the paler grey. This is the darker grey. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. 2 99 for half a metre. It's, now, it's not like the ones we use with jewels. It's not double-sided. It's a very fine, marl grey stretch quilting fabric. Well, it's not quilting fabric. It's being quilted. We call it quilting fabric. It's polyester, 5% spandex, 150 centimetres wide. There you go, that's for half a metre. That's for your half a metre. That's in your marl grey. That, I'll do it the light grey now. Do you know what? I think this fabric, it's quite lightweight, this fabric. I think you can be quite... Uh, experimental and make kind of skirts and things out of this fabric as well, couldn't you? Oh, there you go. Or, or CL's coat again. There you go. That's a good idea. Light grey coming up now. I won't open this one out. Again, it's 150 wide. Polyester and spandex mix. I'd say it was called quilted fabric, not quilting fabric, because quilting fabric means you kind of look at it like a quilting cotton, wouldn't you? 2 99 for half a metre, 150 centimetres wide. Then I've got it in blue. It's a lovely blue, navy. Really rich blue, this one. A little fly, this colour. Oh, hang on. Right, right in the middle of the fluff there, Ben. There you go. 2 99 That's very rich, that navy, isn't it? Beautiful. And then I've got it in black as well. Oh, hang on, I'll turn it this way. You see, I think you could make, if you were to make like a Gucci-esque style jacket in it as well, like kind of a destructured one, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, there you go, 2 99 for half a metre. Okay, now CL is showing you, they are your, they are your stretch polyesters. CL's demonstration now is going to be in a ripstock fabric, and of which I've got three different versions. This is called Arctic Cam, it takes me back to Bond films, where we used to have to design all the, um, the, the, co the, uh, the camo fabrics for all the uniforms and things like that. Arctic Camo Ripstop, 2 99 for half a metre, again, it's 150. Oh, it might be wider than 150, actually. Oh, no, 150 wide. 
Now, it's quite fine. It's quite a fine... That, oh, do you know what? If you make any of Mrs H's bags... Um, well, I think some of Lisa, Lisa Lamb's bags have got ripstock inside, haven't they? That would be fantastic as a lining in a bag, wouldn't it? So that's your Arctic camo. Then I've got, I presume this is desert camo. They are desert, desert camo. No, my camos, you see, don't I? Ripstock fag. Now, I've always called it ripstock. It's obviously not ripstock, it's ripstop. Half a metre, 2 99 Then I've got the plain green version, which is here. I had, oh, now this is slightly heavier weight, this one. This is slightly heavier weight. When I had one of these, when I was on one of the Bond films, I had a bomber jacket like this. Uh, mine was in the green tone, like this one. I felt right butch in it, I did. Oh, that's her, thank you, CL. Bottle green, lightweight, water resistant ripstop, 2 99 That's okay. And then now you also need, you see around here, can we just see there, Jesse, around the cuff and around the hem of the jacket there? Now, it's not a ribbing. It's not, we normally see a ribbing around there. What we've got down there is it's a tubular fabric. Let me show you now. I'll just fold that one up. Navy first. Right, now look, there you go. That's it. That's a tube. See, it's a tube. Look. So, you are, literally, you'd only, need, you'd only need half a metre for a jacket, wouldn't you, CL? Oh, yeah. Because, there you go, three nine ten. you just need half a metre, and you'll have lots left over. It's stretch cotton tubing, look. Make a nice snoot, that, for winter, hang on. Oh, I might have this, look. Ooh. Oh, nice. Is that the cold weather's going now, isn't it? Mind you, I had to defrost my car this morning. Right, and then I've got it in the grey. I love the grey. <coughs> Excuse me. Three ninety nine that one. Three ninety nine for half a meter in the grey. Beautiful. Right, okay, let's go and see CL. I'll leave one pattern here and take one with me. Oh no, I've not got him on wheels today, excuse me. Hello. Hello, long time no see. It's not that long, like it three weeks. It feels like it. Aww. Good to see you, darling. And you, how are you, my darling? We've right. turned into theatricals, haven't we? Darling. <laughs> I'll be calling you mother next, because that's what happens, isn't it? Everyone calls the more gentle out of mother. <coughs> Maybe in the old days. Oh, so oh. <coughs> Don't start me off. Oh. You've got cheap perfume on again. I think that's going on my chest. What, my sh me <coughs> me channel? You, ch you channel. <coughs> oh, dear. I do apologise. Uh, I have a question for John while he's coughing. He oh, no. No, no, why he can think about this. On coats, you know the top stitching on a coat? Yes. Um, is it a channel seam or a Chanel? Channel? Yeah. You know you top stitch? Yes, and yes, it, yes, it, yes, is, yes. Is it channel? Yeah, I would call okay. it channel, yeah. I suddenly wasn't sure if it was channel or channel. Depends if it's got two ends in it. Channel's got two. I'm sure it's channel. I've always well, I called it a channel. Yeah, I am as well. Anyway, not Chanel. This is just us. Like, I thought I'd ask the expert. Oh, but Alice's just gone now, so you have to ask me. <laughs> I know. I feel a bit anxious now. I didn't know he worked in Savile Row. Oh, yes. He had his own little... Oh, yes. Alistair, I'm sorry. No. Ball gowns, all sorts of things. He's yeah, very, don't very... look at how I'm going to do the pocket. Right. OK, what are you going to show us then? <coughs> okay, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about ripstock because some people might have been watching telly this week and they might have seen yes. tents being yes. ripped up and turned into garments. Yes. So um, they're trying to focus a lot on sustainability and like a lot of tents go to festivals, get yes. left there. So yes. it's quite good fabric ripstock. Yeah. Great for anoraks and things. And actually in series two, there was an anorak right. that we put in with ripstock. Oh, which will be on the books we may yeah, have. Yeah, it's in book number two, uh, Sew Your Own Wardrobe, which yeah. I think you still have. Yeah, I'm sure we were saying it'll be on the website. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, CL used to be the fashion producer. Is that what sewing called? producer. Sewing producer. Sorry, yeah, sewing producer <laughs> on the great... British, British so off. And he said cake, cake one then. Sewing beak. Sewing beak from yeah. the same. You thing. don't want me on the bake off. No. I, I, yeah. Then no. you just eat it all, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'm not really into cake. Oh, but you're not? Oh, I yeah. love cakes. Oh. Cheese. Oh. Mm. 
Mm. Girl like my sister in law Julie, she can she could go through a whole cake shop and not flinch at all. Go by the cheese, cheese counter. Shop. Yeah. Anyway, so what I want to talk about, a little bit about ripstock. Yes. And I, I think people can be scared of this as a fabric. Mm. It's not that trickier than maybe a lining fabric. So if you've handled a silky lining fabric, this is going to be fine. Perfect. Um, I've got a couple of little tools here. Yes. Um, one thing that some people like to do with kind of the more slippery fabrics if they're worried, because if you look, can you see in the fabric, you've got a kind of... Um, strong weaving yes, here. Yeah. So that's what gives it kind of rigidity and structure. So it might feel uncomfortable to pin. And would it mark? If you put a pin through it, would yes. it mark? So you always want to make sure that you pin within your seam allowances. If you do pin it, pin it. So if you like weights... Oh. Sorry, these are mine. Yeah, these aren't, these aren't for sale. This one's for sale. Yeah. We've got this one. Very, very limited. They're beautiful. That's Liberty Fabric. On a weight, look, 200 and something ki uh, grams, that one. It's lovely. These, are, sadly, we haven't got the other ones that you're going to see being used now. They're CL's own, but they're made by the same company. Yeah, it's just that I'm not really a floral girl. No. So I've got some, and I like the fact that I got a pack of six. You need to get these. You need to get the packs of six. Yes. So, Ian, that's for you. Sorry. Yeah. He's not in. Yes, oh, is he now? Yeah. Is he now? So um, a lot of you guys have probably already got a rotary cutter. Yeah. If you're into quilting, take the safety off. Don't look at how I'm going to use it. This is not my tool of choice. No, uh, this is a little kit we've got, 24 99 You get the pink rotary cutter and the pink cutting mat. And but then, hang on, hang on, where did you see the cutting? Oh, go. Oh, oh. There you go. Okay, so yeah. you literally just slice around. And, and like whenever you use a rotary cutter, you always need to put a little bit of weight and to separate And you always close the blade it. after every... Uh, I haven't finished. No, but if... Wafted. I'm not going to close it to turn a corner. All right. And then uh, what I would suggest... <laughs> I'm <laughs> going to be one of those days. I'm chopsy it? today, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> what I would suggest is small curves like this can be tricky with a 45 blade. Yeah. So get the slightly smaller one. The 28 one, one yeah. yeah. And then um, whiz around here. So it's... <laughs> cut through the table. Yeah, nice. Make sure your cutting mat's big enough. Yeah, make sure you've got a couple of cutting mats. I just wanted to, to use the pink one. Yeah. Yeah? Right. Easy peasy. You finished now? Yeah. And Only then... That's it, then you shut your blade. Always close your blade. Thank you. So that when you put it in your trolley, nobody picks it up by the blade and has to go to A&E. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Right. So, so that was did you it. not use Just, scissors at all? Or no, I actually <coughs> used scissors. Yeah. So I am a scissor girl, but I used um, the micro serrated ones yes. and it cut through like a breeze. Oh no, whenever I have those scissors, I would say, well, these are yeah, yeah, sales, uh, scissors of choice. They these. are my scissors of choice. And, um, they're on I the just, website, 39 99 Yeah, just because, the one thing I would say with these, never, ever, ever use these on your um, paper. No. Unless it's a fine tissue. And um, I had a workshop, um, Amanda Wyatt came to one of my workshops oh, at the she? weekend. And she said that quilting wadding actually blunts them. Oh. So don't use your micro serrated on wadding. Oh, so no, because you can't, you put your micro serrated through your scissor sharpener no. either, because it ruins them. All right, yep. so that's just a little bit about cutting. You okay. can use pins. If you do use pins, always pin <coughs> in the seam allowance. Yep. So um, a couple of little things. I was playing around with this. I've done a few different kind of pockets. And um, on the cover, it's got a shaped pocket. So it's got a pocket flap. Well, you're not going to be able to see that, but it's one of those, it's like it goes on a slant. Can you just see there? Oh, yeah, there yeah. you go. Now, in the sort of uh, quilted jersey, it didn't look so nice. No. It needs, okay. I think it needs to be more of like a, a silk or something that you can yeah. kind of really roll. In the ripstock, I think if it's the first time sewing ripstock and you need to do absolute precision corners and top stitching, you're making your life a bit hard. So right. we're going to do a slightly easier pocket. So this is a classic welt. Nice. Yeah. So now, have you used the... That's not the quilted fabric you've it used. It is. Is it? Yeah. Oh! I didn't... I thought you must have used... Oh, no, you've used... No, I've used quilted it. fabric. It looks like it hasn't got the quilting in when you've cut it like that. That's yeah. all. Mm. So, um, it's on grain. Right. Um, and sometimes you put a welt on the bias, but this one's on grain. So, um, to get started, first up, I wanted to show you if you do want to do, do the quilting... This? Are you going to use that? No, we can leave it. Yeah. 
If you do want to do the quilting, the pattern, you quilt the fabric before you cut the pieces. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I did a little practice to see whether or not it was worth quilting this. And I think that it came up because it's already slightly quilted. But also I was going for more of a kind of track suit. Yes, yeah. Because that might have appeared on But no, but, but that, so you just, you've, you've used wadding behind there? If you just... Yeah, so you've got the fibre fill, I think, the light quilt wadding, right. if you do. But I, I just think it kind of made it a little bit boxy. I like the fact that this fabric has already got that kind of drapey quality. Well, it depends what, what jacket you want to go for, exactly. doesn't it? Because I like that casual, yeah. track suity look but if you want to go for the more designer yeah oh look alistair's wearing it now picture of alistair wearing it now oh doesn't he look nice now with the uh ripstock yeah the reason we're not going to quilt the ripstock is many of you've probably never sewn it and i don't want you to think oh i've got to quilt a fabric i've never used so yeah. make it and when we did the anorak in the sewing bee we didn't quilt it and it's already got enough structure that i don't think you need that but then now when you sew if your needle marks it, when you sew it, surely the, the, the mm -hmm. sewing needle must mark it. So if you're but quilting it and then you... But your thread stays there, so the whole... No, 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 no. I'm thinking if you make a mistake on the ripstock... Oh, yeah. And you go off a bit, you think you cut... This you could unpick, mm. but a ripstock, you can unpick it, you can have a line yeah. of stitches across, So you? you're kind of making your life doubly hard. Yes. Now, the, I'm, now knowing that he's Canadian, I can see why he's made a cut. It's basically like a kind of puffer jacket. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you think about a puffer jacket, it's very fine, isn't it, on the outside? So, you know, it's cold in Canada, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. he's instructed you to have your fashion fabric, your batting, and then a... A, an underlayer. Okay. And then a lining. Oh my word. So yeah. he's made a quilt sandwich out of this and yeah. then he's lined it as well. That's quite thick, isn't it? Yeah. Which is why I think the sizing is so big. Right. That, so, so we need to talk about that because little Paul, you, what size did you make? I made a chest size 36. Now, little Paul, what size is your chest, Paul? About 36. Uh, 36 38. 38. 38. 37, Paul. Uh, did you measure him? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Oh, nice. he says you were touching him quite a bit when you well, put it on the Guns this like that? Uh, <laughs> don't, because some lady picked on him in the high street. Anyway, that's another story. Um, but anyway, so, so the size comes up, because it fits both he and yeah. Alistair, it comes up quite, if roomy. you don't quilt it, it comes up quite yeah. roomy, doesn't it? And I think with all these layers, that's why they've made it so that it's quite roomy. Yeah. And that's why it's kind of a nice kind of slouchy. So if you do quilt it, it'll be more to the size. It'll be tighter, yeah. Yeah. So if you are one of 36 and you quilt it, go for the 36. But maybe if you aren't quilting it, you don't want it to be loose, no. go a bit smaller. So I um, fitted it to my mannequin, which is a 3840, and I thought that the 36 looked like a nice kind of unisex shape yeah. without being too baggy or too... And did, it have a, did you have a finished size? Did it have a finished it size? It does. So on the uh, pattern piece that I have just screwed up oh, okay, yes. and popped over here, we have got, as usual, with all of the um, American... Simplicity McCall's. Did you know that they're now one company? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. So it's no longer the big four, it's the big fat one. Oh, okay. So Simplicity and McCall's have merged. 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 <laughs> merged, even, yeah. Merged. merged. <laughs> I'm a good sewer, but I'm not great at grammar. Yeah. They've merged, so it's now called the Simplicity McCall's company. Oh, okay. When did that happen? Um, early middle of last year, okay. early last year. That, no. So um, they will always have this little symbol here and that means that this is a measurement point. We're just coming in on that now. So that's a, a line where we could play football tennis. Yeah, yeah, to be to you. To you. So you still see it. Is that the closest you can get, Jesse? Yeah, so you've got this circle with a cross through it. And that means this is your bust line. Right. And then you've got one further down, which will be your waistline. Yeah. And another one, if this was a dress, um, that would be your hips. Hip line, yeah. And what that's And the these are the finished garment measurements. So that right. is as if you've taken this bomber, yeah. laid it flat and measured it. Okay. And what does it come have you got the So the thirty six comes up as forty two around. Well the it's chest. quite six inches. It's six yeah, inches. so it's quite a yeah, lot. Quite so a it's lot. it's filling up quite a lot of that space. So I would say if you're a thirty eight chest, go for a thirty six if you want it kind of a loose yeah. bit. I'd say you're about a forty four, forty six chest, Jesse, aren't you? Do you know big Jesse director? Yeah. Should we squeeze it on him and see what it looks no. like? We'll get a tape measure and do it later. No, I think the jacket would, would probably because it's stretchy. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
No. Okay, so you that's... You that when those sausages burst in. in the, oh, you know, in you're mean. No, 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 I'm not being mean. You've got glitter inside your shirt. Sorry. Yeah. I'm easily distracted today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's one of those days, a weird day. Today. I wonder what the... T if anyone does the stars out there, the planets, what's going on today? Because Laura, who's normally as placid as anything, it's like, you can't even speak to her. She'll snap your head off today. And no, then she won't. Oh, she's she always... She's always Maybe. like that. She no, just said, you're always, always like that, Laura. lovely. Maybe it's just you, John. No, I saw her talking to other people earlier. She's laughing at me. Well, no, you're a guest. We're not allowed to. Let's move <gasps> on. <laughs> they have to right. be nice to me. Is Alistair wearing it again? Oh, OK. Yeah. What are we doing? Uh, no, no, they're just going to put it on. Um, uh, Jess wants to try it on. So we're going to take a picture of Jess wearing it as okay. well. OK. So, because you mentioned it being unisex. Be quite good to get Jess in the office. Not Jessie upstairs. <laughs> no, not Jessie. Sorry, not, not Jessie upstairs. Jess in the office. I thought you Jess. were going to squeeze Jessie no, into it. No, no, no. We'll, we'll squeeze Jess, Jess into it as well. So we'll show, we'll show it to you in a second. All right, I wanted to uh, talk to you about something which I can't show you on the finished bomb up. But right. basically, this fabric is a tube. Right. Hence making a nice snood. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah, so this is the fabric that you used for the... We'll need it back as soon as possible, Paul. No, 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 it's fine. This. We can yeah. um, talk through the process. But right. basically, you along the bottom, we've got a waistband made out of this. Yeah. And then at the front, you've got a section made out of the same as the coat right. to stabilise it. Oh, hey. so we're going to do it live. Oh, here's... Right, OK, is this, this is Jess now. I can't remember what Jess is. You have to come in the middle, Jess. Uh, uh, this is Jess. Cool. John, you just flip the back collar out. That's it. Always a dress her. So this is Jess. Oh, now, I what like is your, it. What is your um, title? Marketing, marketing manager. manager. Yeah. Okay, what's Sarah then? I thought she was marketing, marketing manager. manager. Senior marketing manager. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, so this is Jess. Who you know, this is Jess who does all the, um, the Facebook things and everything like that. Uh, there's not much further you can go back. Or you want me to step back? Or oh, they need a picture of you, a clear oh, picture God. of you like that. Yeah, that, gosh, you mean. You could do this. <laughs> Put your hands in your pocket. For, uh, up there, higher up. They're higher. That's it. There you go. There you go. Right, can I move on now? Um, it looks nice, doesn't it? But I'll need it back in a minute. So can you see... Oh, I'll yeah, do it, while, we'll do it we... live. Here, this is what we're talking about here now. I'm not going to come in because I've got trainers on. Oh, yes. <laughs> if you see here, we've got this section which is made up oh, hang on, of on that fabric. Side, so we've got the jersey here. Yeah. And then we've got the quilt jersey that forms the front of the waistband. Brilliant. Now, this... Is supposed to be one it. piece all yeah, the way around here. here. Yeah, but, but our fabric, because it's in a Thank tube, you, is a little bit narrower. Right. Thank you. Thank we'll you. have it back though to put on here if you don't mind once you finish with it. Right. So this is a little bit narrower than that pattern piece. Oh, okay. Now the pattern piece gives you notches for the right. side seam. Uh -huh. So what I did is I put a side seam in it. So I cut a piece for the back. Thank you. Yep. So if we look here, instead of this being one continuous piece that wraps all the oh, way around, yes, I yes, put yes. a side seam. Now, actually, because this isn't a classic rib cuff, that's quite a good thing to do, because if you need to adjust it, you've got another place that you can exactly. take it, which I actually did on my mannequin. I was going to say, because the, the, cuff, the cuff you normally buy is very heavily ribbed and pulls yeah, in, Yeah, really tight. It? Yeah. yeah. So this is just a softer, more relaxed okay. fit. It also means that that particular cuffing is kind of hard to get in interesting colours. Um, so it means that you'll be able to do more funky things than if you were going to use a jersey rib. So uh, my assistant's just dressed the mannequin behind me. So I cut that out, and you also <coughs> use this for your collar. Yep. And then I ended up with a waistband that's like this. So right. this is the back. So it's all pinned, ready for me to start sewing. And this is the front bit. So that's right. going to join onto the bottom of our jacket. Yeah. Would you would you always go with two side seams rather than doing a seam down the centre back? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you could put, but there's no seam in the centre back of, of the, the jacket, jacket. So it'd look odd to suddenly have yeah. a seam. Yeah, and yeah, also yeah. it kind of really jumps at you if it's in the... Yeah. 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 So actually, no, I never would. No, <laughs> that's fine. Just asking. And so all I need to do with these is just stitch these in place. Now, okay. um, I would then kind of, once I've got this, before I attach it to the jacket, I would try it on the person and see how big it is because I can still take in the side seams. Uh, now, needle? Needle. 
just a regular sharp needle. Okay. So I've got um, quite a fine needle in here. Right. Um, just because I'm lazy, I didn't actually put interfacing on this piece. Would you normally? I would normally. Okay. And what I suggest you do, turn your iron to cool. Oh, yeah. And use a press cloth over the top of it. I was going to say, test it first. Yeah. Away from on a little scrap away from the jacket. So it's 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. Oh, here we go, Beverly in from West Yorkshire. Hello, Beverly. Hi there. As a Canadian, I can tell you that the coats are always made bigger to accommodate all our bulky sweaters. Exactly. Thank you. And Nicola, whose message hasn't arrived. There you go, got it. Uh, it's rip stop because the weave stops the fabric ripping when buffered by the winds when used for tents and sails. Ooh. That's Nicola in Neath in Port Talbot. Oh, bother that. Uh, oh, sorry. Port Talbot's just down the road from me. I'm from Puff Call. Are you? Yeah. Is that near Barry? Not that far, yeah. Uh, Paul says, why are you doing a Scottish accent? It's not Scottish, <laughs> it's Welsh. It's my natural accent that I lost when I moved to that there London. Yeah, that there London town. <laughs> no, when I first moved to London, no one could understand me. And um, people used to paint little dragons and leeks on my door oh, because, no. and I was actually um, teaching I, and I was quite young and I managed to get quite a senior job. So I, and I wasn't very much older than my students. So it was tricky to get kind of respect. Yeah. So I just started speaking slower. Oh. They used to speak really, really high. <laughs> Really, really, really fast with a really strong Welsh accent. Oh, well, look, when Brookside, you too young to remember this, no, but no. when Brookside started, I was working down south and people were like, why are they pushing on that funny voice? And I said, that's, that's the liver puddling accent. If they speak and people wouldn't believe <laughs> that people actually spoke like that. I have to admit, I'm really sorry, guys, back behind the scenes, but um, a long time ago, well, not a long time, a few years <laughs> ago, I did a Royal Shakespeare uh, version of... Twelfth Night, yeah, and the Mechanicals, who were like the comedians, <coughs> they set them as brummies. Oh, did they? And it was hysterical because it's quite a, a funny accent. And so whenever I come up to Birmingham and I go off the train, I'm like, why are they all talking like the the Mechanicals oh. from the Sunlight like Stream? So, and then I get here and I realise that they're not putting it on, and I shouldn't. Well, it's like Chris, like when Chris is producing me, I I, I, I know Chris is from Birmingham, he's from the Black Country, and he doesn't like being covered with completely different accent, but it's very strong. Basically. Okay, so right. one of the things with this kind of a fabric, yeah, is if we just leave that seam like that, can you see how? it kind of bounces, yeah, so it yeah, needs yeah. a little bit of controlling. And rather than try and press it in the same way we would a natural fibre, I'm going to top stitch it. Right. And I've actually top stitched all of my uh, construction seams. Oh, okay, every single one. Yeah, because I think it gives it that kind of utilitarian look yeah. and it holds everything in place. So um, I probably, if I really wanted this to be a waterproof jacket, wouldn't be doing this. No because I'm now putting a little hole. But <coughs> ripstock is more of a kind of um, shower proof, yes. shall we say. If you want to make everything waterproof, as we did in um, series two anorak, you need to use a heat seal tape. <coughs> but Which we don't tell. No, but I think that's a step too far, really. Yeah. So. But that's taking, that's um, specialising yeah. That's not just dressmaking, that's proper specialising in waterproof garments. Yeah, so it? this is much more of a fashion yeah, garment of course, than yeah. a... And um, one little thing that I should have done before I started my top stitching is yeah. turn my stitch length up. Yeah. So your top stitching always needs to be a bit longer than a construction stitch so that um, it doesn't look too pinched, particularly on this. So if you look at your tents, they're always going to have really long stitching. Yes. And can you see how by top stitching it flat? Yes. It just looks a little bit more meant, doesn't it? So this is my iron on, John. Oh, it is, but it might be on hot. So what we're going to do to prep the waistband, you literally fold this in half. <coughs> Sorry. I'm ever so sorry about my allergy. Um, Jennifer right. says, morning, John and CL. Great show as always. Is the oh, jacket Jennifer. lined from Jennifer? It is. But I think that's an option. So when I, I thought about making this very tracksuity, um, and I wasn't going to put a lining in at all, but I didn't really like the back of the fabric. So No, no, because the back of the fabric isn't like... 
If it had been the fabric that Ju um, yeah. Jules uses that's two-sided... I would actually think this would be great in that fabric. In that fabric. fabric. You know the fabric that we said, it's on the... If there's any left, it's like this, but it has other colours. We made uh, Sales Cotigan out of it, yeah. in the, the grey and the yellow, um, where it's quilted on both sides, whereas this one, the back of this fabric isn't particularly attractive. It's just got that white backing, so you, it is nice to line it. Would you line... If you made the ripstop jacket, would you line that as well? I don't know. I think it depends on the look that you want to go for. Yeah. If I was going to do it as an unlined jacket, I would probably overlock all my seams yeah. and oh, overlock yes, my yes, pocket yes, bags yeah. and things like that. So um, this one does actually have a lining. Yeah. And the instructions tell you to make the jacket and then make the lining and then to hand sew the edges in. So right. you slip stitch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's an easy way to drop a lining in. Yeah. I did a little bit of cheeky bagging out. So, Which, if you're more experienced, then you can do. Yeah. Can't you? So all we need to do with the iron is to. Oh, this is nice. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to put it to the Was that there before? I used this before. No, I don't think so. Okay. We've had Jill Rep from June Taylor in, you see. So. What's on the back? Uh, it's a cutting <laughs> board. Oh, you do know it then, you cheeky thing. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. None of us know what I'm talking no. about. So all you need to do is to put a nice crease in here. And again, if you use rib cuffing, it's already done yes, like this. Yeah. So we're sort of creating our own ribbing, if you like. And I'm not going to iron over here because I haven't got press cloth. But we just want to kind of really... No, you haven't. Huh? No, you haven't. I was just looking no. to see if it was one So there. if you look, I can iron it. I just, it's yeah, in low yeah. heat and just don't spend too much time labouring with the iron. So we press all the way along here yeah. and then that's going to be ready to attach to our jacket later on. Okay. Okay, lovely. So um, pockets are something that a lot of people get a bit stressed about. Yeah. Including me. Well, <laughs> the thing is, a pocket, if you make, it's important. In your brain, you're thinking, if I make a mess of this, I've ruined the whole thing because it's on show for the world to see, isn't it? Yeah. And you're about to do it live on television. I am. <laughs> okay, so um, when I first went to the National as a junior, all you're allowed to do is trousers. Yes. And then they let you do a bit of weight, they let you do waistcoats. So I did trousers and waistcoats. And I used to do a welt pocket in quite a different way. And it used to be one of those things, uh, but we used to cut them on the bias and match checks and all that kind of stuff. Now the pattern piece has got a shaped curved pocket bag. Right. And then a shaped curved pocket lining. Right. If you get them the wrong way round, the chances are, well, they don't fit, exactly. you've got, yeah. and also you may end up with going up there. And so I find that kind of construction complicated. Okay. So we're going to ignore the instructions. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. So I've made I've a long rectangle of lining. Right. This is going to be too long. Yeah. And I used half of the waistband as a kind of guide. Right. And then a bit of ripstock. Okay. And the ripstock is going to be pressed and folded into our welt. And what's that there? Interfacing. That's just iron, is it iron on interfacing? Iron on interfacing. Okay. And what I've done is from the front pattern, I have marked the shape of my of pocket. pocket. It's very like when you're doing a zip with the with the Y seams. This is the same. You, you, yeah. You've drawn a letterbox with a line running through the middle, and then about a centimetre from the end, you've stopped and you've just done yeah. those Y's going to yeah. the corners. So it is very similar to that, but we're going to then use this fabric to create the welt yes, okay yeah. so this is a different kind of and this is what you would do on a welt on a trouser now yes. you could make them really really deep um you could make and it like the a same as the, as the pocket on a waistcoat if you're making a exactly. waistcoat or did yeah, a pocket a welt there pocket. Yeah. now the one thing i would say is because this has been designed for a pocket flap yeah as you saw on jess that opening is quite high so i've just dropped it a sec. right okay. so our first step yeah we're going to take this and um, I'm being a bit lazy here. I've just kind of pin marked my corners. Right. So you would normally tailor's tack and mark out all of your corner points. Yeah. Okay. And on the reverse of this, I've also put some interfacing. Right. Along where your where the Along letterbox the is going to go. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to refer to it as a pocket mouth. Right. Because that's its name. Okay. <laughs> um, and then. <laughs> Not patronising at all. No, it's just people like, because then people will look for a letterbox when yes. they're looking, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I have a few little bugbears about um, renaming things. So what's it called? Well, it's a pocket mouth. Pocket this mouth. is the mouth of the like pocket. Pocket mouth. The other, one, the main one is um, having two single like lips, and that's called a jetted pocket. Yes, but it's, people, that's right. Yes, sir. people started calling it a double welt. No. And it's not. No, I know that. Guys, one. it's a jet. Yeah. Um, I probably need to get out more. Yeah. <laughs> Jobs we'll get like, over the fact that when you're in the national, they only let you do pockets for a year. <laughs> no, I, well, I did flies for a year. Oh no. It's fine because I didn't know how to do them when I got there. No, you certainly did when you left. Okay, so Carol Ling were there when you were there. No, no, long time ago then. Yeah, so see the direction of my yeah. Yeah. So this is gonna um, we're gonna whiz around here. Okay. okay? Now whenever I'm doing um, a letterbox pocket. Yeah. <laughs> no. Or a, yeah, I I will always. I'm gonna just drop my stitch a little bit. I always start in the middle of the line. Okay. Because if you try and start on the corner, that's where your back stitching needs to be. And I want to make sure that my corners are really, really tight. Okay. Which is why I've drawn the exact shape of my pocket mouth on. Okay. Are we all right for time? Yeah, yeah. We've got about 20 minutes, have we, Jo? Oh, yeah, that's time. I'll do a recap in a second. Okay, oh, so... Oh, less than 20 minutes. I'm going to come really nice and slowly to my right. corner. It's because it's on needle down, isn't it? Yeah. It... And then... One, two, three, four. I'm counting, I'm counting the stitches. Seven. Seven. Eight. Yeah, eight. Because I want eight on the other side. Yeah. Oh, poor John. He can't tell me any jokes. Do you need me to tell you some jokes? Why? No, I'm concentrating. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to concentrate a minute. Don't ask for jokes, a little palsy. He's got, he's got a new one. What's his new oh, one? Oh, no, I'm not, I can't say your new one on air, Two, Paul, no. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. So, um, hmm. No, we don't, we don't want jokes, thank you, Paul. Oh, I'm not saying it, Paul. No. <laughs> Is it rude? No, no, this one's another one, knock, knock. Okay, knock, knock. Yeah. Who's Who? there? Yodelahi. Yodelahi who? <laughs> Didn't know you could yodel. Boom, boom. This is Paul, Paul's kind of joke, everybody. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't give up the day job, Paul. No, I'm not doing any more, Paul. We're carrying <laughs> on with the sewing. OK, so we are now going to cut open. Yes. You look scared. No, not in the slightest. I have every faith in you. <laughs> So I've brushed my chalk off, but I can still see that line. Yeah. And this line does need to be reasonably accurate, which is why I drew it on, because it helps hold the shape of the welt. Yeah. And then we're going to come and cut this Y right into the stitching, but not over the stitches. Yeah, of course. And then over here. So a little sharp pair of snips like this is invaluable for this kind of work. And then over here. Now, you might be wondering why I've put ripstock and lining. Yes. And not just lining. Were you wondering that? No. Well, I know why. But okay. uh, yes, why are you doing that? Because when you open the pocket mouth, I don't want to see lining. No. I want to see the face fabric. Yeah. So this is something that often isn't done in sewing patterns. They will often tell you just to do, it just the to lining. do the lining yeah. or to use a... I pocket. hate that, though, when you just... I hate when that. You just, yeah. like, like when you have pockets on the seam of a dress and oh. they've just done it the lining, they haven't done the back one of the... Yeah, of the so I'm... Um, posting it through the mouth. I'm turning out my pocket mouth. Yes. <laughs> and then this is where we're going to need a little bit of an iron. Right. I'm You'll so be all right without a cloth? Yeah. I'm so mean, because I might do a bit of finger ironing. Okay. Um, now, the heat setting's on its coolest. It's fine, Jesse. Yeah. Thank you. So, I want to create a really nice, flat seam here, because it will drag, and you will see this seam line. 
so I've used my finger to kind of control this. If this was a wool, I could really get in and, and hammer it a little yeah. bit with the iron, but... And use lots of steam with the wool, yeah. would you? And then we want to come right into these corners. So I'm creating the shape of my welt opening. Yeah. So that little... Um, There's only a tiny bit at the end, isn't there, of the, of the pocket yeah. mouth opening. I think I might want a little bit more fabric than that. That's quite long. All right. No, well, I'd like a bit more. That's plenty. Yeah. No, it's plenty for somebody who's done a year of them at the National, not for somebody... No, but it's still a, that's still a good centimetre and a half. OK. Now, getting these... all almost... Getting these corners really well pressed yeah. is very important for the next stage. Because what we're going to do next is I'm going to take my... Do not me to hold that one out the way? Yeah. I'm going to take this... Can you see this. that from upstairs? There you go. Now, the reason why I put an inch bit of interfacing is because that extra bit of interfacing is going to help me work out where this goes. Yeah. So this comes up to that sort of pocket mouth shape, yeah. like so, yeah? Yeah. And then we are going to anchor it with a few pins. And again, just be careful. I do need to pin it, so I am going to have to put a couple of holes, but it's going to be fine. Yeah. And then... I'm not going to go for a recap till the end, so you've got all the sewing time. I didn't want to take it away from you. Ah. So when we turn this over... Yeah that is starting to form our welt. Yes. Okay, so we need, to, I need to put a bit more of a press on here or maybe clip, but just yes. for... Now, actually, what will happen is then this rolls down like so, and that hides it in the back, okay? Yes. And... Because you then bring your lining. Yeah, but before we do anything to worry about this little bit, yeah. we need to anchor this through here yeah yeah now i suggest for a ripstock if this was in a wool i would stitch it from here yeah and i would go back into my original stitch line so that i don't see any stitching on the outside exactly. but for this particular fabric i think a little stitch in the ditch yeah or a sink stitch, as it's known in the tailoring world. Sink? What? Stitch in the ditch is a sink stitch? Sink stitch, because you're sinking your stitch. Oh, yeah. Mervyn never taught us that. Did they call it crack stitching? Mervyn Wallace. Now he called it stitch in the ditch, I think. Did he? Yeah. I'd never heard that until... Oh, really? Yeah. <coughs> it was a long time ago. He might not have said that. Mind you, he's from Australia, so it could have been anything. Yeah, stitch in a ditch. That's it. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to do in between there and there. So my so teacher, this out the way. Yeah, thanks. Please. My teacher called it crack stitching because <coughs> you're stitching in a crack. Oh, okay. And it was before they'd invented another type of. Yeah. So it was nothing like that. Yeah. So um, going to take this stitching up, and you want to really <coughs> be careful. I do want to do a back stitch, but I'm going to do it kind of carefully so I'm not um, going beyond my little letterbox shape. Mouth um, opening. <laughs> you can call it letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> I know, sometimes I just need to get over myself. Because so what? <laughs> I need to get over myself. <laughs> so it's not always... Um, this isn't going to be my most precise work because I can't quite get in there. And then I'm using a contrast thread so you can see what I'm doing but obviously you'd use a matching thread yeah and because of the sort of fabric this is like having the stitching it's a bit wobbly here but yeah you're not going to criticize me are you? No. not while I'm here anyway um, <laughs> I'm joking I know okay careful, I'll slap you again oh you got sleeves on today yeah, I'm always wearing <laughs> sleeves now. <laughs> so, so that's my kind of welt formed. Yeah. Then we're going to start working on the actual um, pocket bag and anchoring these corners. So before I do that, I will come in and decide how big my bag needs to be. Yeah. 
So you don't want it to extend beyond. No. And that's why I think in the pattern they've given you um, a shaped piece. Yes. But I mean, you're not really going to be putting a lot in here. No. And then what I need to do is to attach this little bit. Yeah. Down here. Okay. Mm hmm. So you guys can do this a bit more precisely. So we're going to whiz across here. So I may have made a small mistake on one of those pockets. Have you? Was that Paul said he was the one you left the pin in when he put his hand in no. the pocket? No. I can't see it. Put your hand in both pockets, John. Oh, I was looking. No, I can't feel a mistake. OK, good. There's no sweets in here. <laughs> Are they for different sizes? No. Oh, hang on. Oh, no, I can see what you've done. So see what I'm doing right now? Yes, yeah. I forgot to do one of, do yes. this on one of them. And then it was too late. Once I constructed the whole pocket, I couldn't come back in. So I've left one. There's a bit of fabric just flapping yeah. about. OK. So um, that's our pocket bag kind of formed. Yeah. Just going to trim that away. And then this is all going to come down like so. Now we need to do a bit of stitching around here. I like it in the quilt. Paul's asking me which one I like it best in. I like it in the quilted fabric best. Yeah. Why? I don't know. It's just personal choice, isn't it? I think I'd wear that one. I think I'd wear the quilted one far more than I would this one. OK, so I'm going to just lift up here because we've got to anchor this through all the layers yes. so that we don't have a hole under there. And at this point, you're not going to catch in your welt. So this is a slightly... There are tutorials on how to do it this way. And there aren't tutorials on the way that I learned to do it. So that's why I've kind of gone for more of a, a Ron and Sandra way, if that makes sense. Yeah. Ron, Sandra Betsina, I think you sell her book, don't you? Yeah, we have some of her patterns as well, because her yeah. patterns are fitting for patterns, aren't they? Well, they're called Today's Woman. And uh, the big thing with Sandra is that because she was in the fashion industry, when people asked her to make sewing patterns, she didn't want to use the American sewing pattern sizing. Yes. So they had to create a size set just for Sandra. Um, and so they're much more about um, getting fit nice. Yes. So then what we need to do is to lift this up because yeah. we've got to create the bag down the sides yeah. anchoring in our little corner yeah so this is exactly like you've seen people doing um bags yeah, yeah. whoops oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah. so sometimes like on the quilt fabric this was a bit lumpy like it's quite thick. Yeah. So I often use a um, zipper foot to go over that triangle. Oh, okay. Because then I can really stitch exactly on that line. Yes. I've got three minutes left. Three minutes? Yeah. Okay. So you do that on either side. Wow, that 20 minutes went quick. Oh, yeah. It's right, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. And then trim up all your tails, and that's your little pocket. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. The next thing that's kind of important to think about with a garment like this is we've got a zip down the front. Yes. Now, even on um, a lot of people on the sewing bee this week, somebody overstretched it in the jersey because they made track suits. So if you're sewing stretch like this one, I put interfacing down the centre So that's front. just a strip of your normal iron interfacing you've just cut? It's actually Taylor's interfacing that comes pre-cut. Oh, no, but, but, for, but that's for us, all it is. Yeah, but it's, it's, all it is is you your can medium use, weight interfacing. You just or your slice edge it. tape. Yeah. Edge yeah. tape would work. Edge tape is pre-cut, so you iron that into place before we do anything. We'll do that. 
Okay. How many minutes have we got? No, no, no we're not going to do that. We're going to pretend. No. Okay. That's really, really important. And all of this needs some nice pressing. We want to trim all our whiskers. Then your zip. Um, we've got a moulded zip. Oh, you did have a moulded zip. Yeah, I've got a moulded zip. Yeah. yeah. So the zip on the pattern, it will tell you to get a longer one. But don't worry, you can cut them down. Right. Okay? I'm okay. not going to show you now because we're no, going to no, run no, out no, of time. Not, no. So in order to put this on, and I you have to do all of this once the collar's on, once the waistband is on. So it's, the, it's almost one of the last things yeah. to do before you line it. Then. Exactly. Yeah. So um, you, let's say the waistband's here. This is going to come oh, up. Oh, yes, because you need the waistband on because you say it probably has to carry on beyond. Right. Yeah. And when you put this on, see how this is folded? Yes. You actually take it so it would be attached like, like so. Yeah. And you take your zip only to your press line right so that you can turn that around afterwards and that's going to give you a nice corner here mm -hmm. so once let's pretend that's on yeah yeah mm -hmm. flip your zip over and then you just pop a pin so that you don't get it confused yeah. it's a massive chunky pull on this it is, yeah. so then we're just going to remove the other side <gasps> So that's why I pinned it, so I know that this one goes yes, on here. Yeah. And then you can see that the teeth are going into the body of the... So it's right sides together. Yeah. Now, if you do want to remove, if it's too long, your zip, you get a pair of, like, proper toolkit pliers and you pull the teeth off above the line. Right. And then what you do with the tape is, without the teeth on, you can fold, fold it over... It and that gives you a stop point so that you don't end up... With your zipper coming off the going, end. Yeah. Which happened to um, Deborah in Series 3. Okay. Okay? So, um, or you could wait by your zip once you've made yeah, it. Yeah, so make it all up the right and then end. buy exactly the right exactly. length zip. Then you haven't got to worry about cutting anything off or anything. Because um, they do these zips in all sorts of lengths, don't they? They so, do. Yeah. And they do them in standard jacket lengths. Yeah. So I suppose it's going to depend on which size you go for, because the longer ones, the bigger ones are obviously slightly longer. Yeah, but you can always just fine-tune your neckline yeah. and drop that a few mil so that it fits, fits your zip. Yeah. So then, once that's stitched in place, yeah. with a zip foot, so you need a one-sided foot, so I'm going to, I would stitch in the centre of that tape. Right. You then roll this over. Yeah. And we don't want this to come over our teeth. The whole point of a, a moulded zip like this is that it's a feature. So you, you kind that of roll that point. all over the way and then we top stitch that in place. Brilliant. So I would have a little practice um, and see whether I often was so in the same direction on both my top stitch and my construction. Yeah. But sometimes it helps if you go the opposite way. So see if you get any twisting. Mm -hmm. And one thing that you might find useful if you're worried about the pins is that sticky tape. I think you've got some. The oh, of, yes, yes, um, yeah. I'll, I'll bring it It's like a later. wonder tape. Yeah. And top stitch that. A lot of bag makers use that. It's yeah. like a quilting tape, yeah. Um, and you'd want to top stitch not right here, but sort of a bit further away to give it a kind of, I don't know, manufactured look. Exactly, exactly. Yeah? That's what you want to look like, isn't it? I'm going to have to stop you, I'm afraid. I know. Um, but you're back in and out now, all the years in the industry. How many dog coats have you made? None. Well, yeah, I've, yeah, I've made one. I've seen you. Yeah, so they made dog coats this week. And, and for a couple of years, dog coats have been, like, mentioned. And I've managed to avoid making a dog coat. When but she was the sewing producer. When I was the sewing producer. But no, no. So we're doing a dog coat. Uh, Oh, uh, right. Right. Thank you, Sia. <laughs> I'll see you in an hour's time. Oh, I'll just um, go back to my table here. Uh, fabrics first. So I've got the quilty fabrics first. So we've got the darker grey one that CL made the first jacket out of. Most popular the fabric. Now, let me show you the back. This is why we think it needs to be lined, because the backing of the fabric isn't the prettiest. Uh, 2 99 for half a metre. It's 60 inches wide. Uh, we've also got that in pale grey. Can I have a honey and lemon if you've got a minute, please? Two ninety nine for half a metre, remember? Loads of sim baskets. Uh, uh, navy, navy. Oh, it's the most popular. Most popular, the navy. That's now very limited because so many of you come in for that. Navy, stretch. Now it's got stretch to it, look. 
polyester and elastane mix. And it also comes in black, classic black. I'm just trying to eavesdrop. There's Alistair and, and Ciela chatting over there. I can't hear what they're saying. <laughs> Alistair's coughing now. Two ninety nine, right? Uh, now the tubing. So I'll do the tubing next while we're here. Got the tubic in the blue. That's the tube. Look, the tube. Uh, you only need half a metre of that. And then the grey one. OK, then I've got the rip stop. Uh, so we did it in the Arctic first. What's the matter? Two ninety-nine for half meters. That's the Arctic. I've got oh, got the desert. Friend of mine's son used to be in the Arctic Monkeys. He was the drummer. Yeah. No, 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 no. He left after they've got big time. Yeah. There's that camera. Got married recently. Two ninety-nine. I worked with him when he was a kaboom. When he did Life and Times of Henry Pratt, he was one of the. Um, uh, and there's a green one. Bottle green, lightweight, water resistant. Now, we say water resistant, so it'd be good in the shower. Right, pattern. Which size are you doing? 30, 40, 40. Oh, I've only got 30, 40, 48, but it's the big one. They're about the same, 40 to 46. Remember, it comes up big. After the break, Alice is back. I promise we'll get through everything this hour. Um, and uh, he's got pom-poms. He's got the rest of the fabrics. He's got uh, a bookmark. He's got a brand new um, scent of his um, Frisian after the cow. See you in three. <laughs> Ciel's back, Ciel's back, look, 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 how gorgeous is your, well it's not so little dog this one is it, how gorgeous, well, little boy said he could wear this on a rainy day, I'm thinking I should, oh hang on, what, oh, I can't reach, There, there we go. <laughs> They're all giggling now, aren't they? Look. Anyway, uh, now we can make it out of this lovely, lovely fabric. You all all right there? We'll do that fabric first. We'll do that fabric first. So I've got it green. Now, what's it called? It's, it's PVC. Uh, Green pore print water resistant fabric. It is PU coated polyester, but it's not like PU like we make for the, Oh, it's Wendy's display. Wendy's display is just all fallen over. That's what it says. 3 99 look. 150 centimetres. I'll talk louder so they can't hear. Uh, uh, we'll talk louder now. We'll talk louder. Everything's falling off the shelves. That's all it is. Green pore print water resistant fabric. Now, it's not like the ripstop. Look, it's thick. It's, do you know what? You could use this in your garden. You could use this to cover, you know, if you want to make covers for your um, garden furniture or something like that, that would work beautifully for that. Three ninety nine for half a metre, that one. I've also got it in blue and red. Oh, sorry, yes, yeah, sorry, I went straight on. Then I've got it in the blue. That's nice, isn't it, look? Woof. Oh? This one? Oh, this is the one that um, CL would wear if she was a dog. 3 99 blue pore print water resistant fabric. Uh, then I'll put it in red. Ooh, your dog will get noticed in this one, won't it? Bright red. It's like, it's like ladybird red, that, isn't it? Ladybird red. 
3.99 for half a meter. Okay, now the patterns, the pattern that CL used was this one. I've got two different patterns. This one's brilliant because look, he's got all sorts going on in there. It's got a leash, it's got a little lead, dog lead uh, pocket, it's got a uh, bed, and then different sizes and versions of coats. This is the one that CL's made. Uh, on the back there, you can see everything. Now, uh, the second picture down on the website will be everything from the back of that. Eight pounds and 49 pence. I've got another pattern, which is just for uh, a little dog coat. Uh, now you could add, you can customize it. You can put frills on it. You could put um, jeweled. That's not a real dog, by the way. That's not a real dog. Extra small to extra large. Now I don't know how, I haven't got my glasses. I don't know how you tell what size you need. To, uh, you must have to measure them. I'll take it over and have a look. 8.49. Now I've got loads of gorgeous fabrics here. I'm going to whisk, I'm going to whisk through them. Oh, right, the last pattern, the little one with the stuffy dog. That one's limited. That one's limited. Loads of you coming in. Right, look, at, I love these. You see, I'd quite like a dressing gown made out of these. Uh, right, let's start. Uh, no, dog bed, dog bed, dog coat. Uh, just a blanket, because Norman and Ellie love sleeping on the beds upstairs in the sun, when the sun's come through the window. And I have to put lovely big blankets down for them, otherwise they make a mess on the sheets and everything. That's blue dog bone and, oh, it's gone. Then I've got that in grey, uh, 150 centimetres wide. I'm presuming it's 100% polyester, is it? Is it 100? Uh, 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 no, no, polyester? 100% polyester. 3.99, grey dog and bone, paw print fleeced fabric. It's not double sided, it's only one sided, right? Then look at this, multicoloured on black paw prints. Isn't that lovely? It's lovely, it's fleece. You can make a lovely fleecy for yourself out of this, it doesn't have to be for the dog. Paws on black, colourful paws on black. That's lovely. So you can make, a lo you can make yourself a lovely fleece, couldn't you? Or the back of a quilt. Be lovely, wouldn't it? 3 99 for half a meter, 150 centimetres wide. Loads of new buyers coming in. Hello, new buyers. How are you? You get your free gift, remember? And now I've got colourful on white. Oh, actually, no, I don't know if they... Oh, yes, they are the same. Isn't that funny? They look completely different on the white, don't they? Oh, cream. It's not cream. It's definitely not cream. It's definitely white. 3 99 for half a metre. Right, I'm going back. Am I going back to dog and bone again? It's weird that they put them in a funny angle. There we go. Dog and bone. This is Paul's favourite. Oh, it's back to front. That's the right side there, look. In black. It's not grey, it's in black. It's definitely got a right side, this fabric. That one was just folded wrongly. Okay. Yeah, it's black, it's black, that's why. Right, and then I've got plain colours, blue. Royal blue. 150, oh, now this is anti, this is the anti-pill fleece that we've made lots of, um, of Joe Carter's animals out of. 3.99 for half a metre. Yeah, no, they're all brand new. They're all brand new. But we've, we had this one in the Dragon. When we did the Dragon, it's not a premiere. We've had it before. 115 wide, 100% polyester. 3.99. Anti-pill fleece fabric. Then I've got green, like a bottle green. Uh, I need Laura to come inside the desk, if that's all right, please. Uh, it's a plain bottle green anti-pill fleeced fabric. Which one are you using in your, in your demonstration? And then the black one. Plain green. Plain green. That's the one that, that's the one that CL's about to use. And there's the black one. Right, Jersey, let's go. Right. I don't know how to display this because I haven't got a dog or a mannequin or anything to put Wait. it on. You can kind of, um, I was just going to let it Was this your idea? Was this your idea to make, make a dog coat? No, it was funny because when I said, 
Oh, see Ellen on Friday. Uh, oh, what day is it today? Friday. I went, yeah, yeah, she's doing a bomber jacket. Oh, yeah, lovely. And she's doing a dog coat. And I was like, have you asked her yet? <laughs> I thought, oh, I'd love to see the reaction. Anyway, uh, we did have one of those things. You know those things they... they Pinata things. Oh, okay. Hanging. Oh, like a donkey. Yeah. Just be careful the irons. Yeah, I will. On, yeah? Put it over there. Right. Off you go then. Okay. So this one. Yes. Actually, now he's nonchalantly thrown over there. I'm just going to show you the difference. We've got a double layered version here, and this is a single layered version. Oh, okay. So you can do it either way. Um, so this, when you've got a fabric that's water resistant like this, I wouldn't put a lining. That isn't water resistant. That isn't water resistant. And also the dog. You've got to think about the dog. You don't want it sweating and. Yeah. So this is much more for a, just a shower proof thing. Yes. So you know. Um, and again, if they're going to get muddy and you want a water, I want one that I can wipe down. Yes. I don't want one that I've got to wash. No, of course, no. So um, they've got, they've given you two options and on the pattern it will say single sided. Right. Or the one with the bite and then you just need to uh, trim down. So you literally, if you, put, you haven't put a bias on, you literally have turned the edge yeah. over and stitch it down. You don't need to finish the edge it no, because it doesn't run, does all, it? because it's all like very solid. I mean, I think this would be really cute for kids. Little Max, really, you know, oh, like. yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Like oh, what? my dinner bib. That'd be good for my dinner bib. Look, I could wear it like that. I don't that. think it's big enough. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, I know. I haven't done a whisker trim there. That's all right. I'll just pull that thread off. So like that. Okay. Picky, picky. <laughs> oh, yes. That's, uh, no, I, yeah, don't pull it. Because remember the time when we were doing the tailoring? And I went, oh, what's happening? Yeah, I know. Out, and <laughs> it was a very important out. tailor tag. So, so now on the fleece, you'd do a bagging out then, would you? I'm not going to bag it out. Oh, you're not? No, because okay. I think with a fleece, it's a very malleable fabric and it moves around a lot. And I think you'll make it really distorted. Right. So we're going to follow the pattern's instructions. And I'm going to show you how to use the lining to make your own binding. Oh, fantastic. So rather than have to go out, because you always end up with, a, especially with a big curvy piece like yes. this on the fabric i'm going to end up with loads of pieces that are on and the bias course, so why so not use them that. up then buy a separate product uh, this is just our cotton i've got the i've got it over there um just our everyday uh solid cotton i've got four of them four different ones over here you carry you carry okay. on uh, you carry on with the illustration. I'm just, just going to do a little bit of trimming. So what I've done is I've I've cut my lining, which is the stable of the two layers. So I've got that uppermost. And yeah. then I've laid it on my fleece, and the fleece has just grown a little bit. So yeah. I'm just going to cut the edges. So if you're a quilter, you'll know all about this. Yeah. This is like putting two layers of quilts, isn't it? Yeah. Quilting's like a kind of mystery to me. I'm not a quilter. Oh, you're not? No. <laughs> um... I can buy a blanket. I don't need to make a. Oh! <laughs> but, but do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not. It's sort of not for me. Now yeah, I'm going to do. Cheeky. I'm just being cheeky because I think you know it's amazing what people do, and that's what makes life interesting. That we've all got different interests. So I'm going to do something cheeky up here. Right. Because. If I put a binding around here and then across there, I've either got to mitre every corner, and if you're a quilter, you'll know that that's not fun. Yes. Um, or I'm just going to bag this edge out before, okay. and then it's much easier to finish, and it's kind of nice and soft. Yep. Rather than having a turnover or, so um, I've just made sure I need to do this before I baste it in place. So I need it right sides together. Yeah. So I'm just rolling that over. And then I added a little bit of uh, seam allowance in there. Are we all going to get your cold, John? No. Are you sure? Apparently, um, I could have called it up to, like, months ago. It's a lurgy that hangs around. Like, Alistair's had it since Christmas. Has he? Yeah. And um, who was in yesterday? Uh, oh, Rebecca Jane, Alexander Frost, Frost, Alexander. She's had hers for months as well. Okay, so I'm only going to bag out one corner to show you, but obviously when we do the demo, just pretend that I've done both. Yep. Okay, and then oh, okay. we're going to stitch this with um, a normal seam allowance, so 1.5. Yep. Oh, somebody's having a lovely time. <laughs> uh, the machine uh, CL's using up in the next hour with Gary. Gary's back. Gary! <laughs> That's from Brookie, isn't it? Do they used to do that? Did they? Gary. Well, yeah, I've, I don't know why I do like because he doesn't speak like that. No, he doesn't no, at all. No. no, but there is a comedy sketch, or maybe it's, um, I don't know, Gary. someone used to do it. I don't know. Or you and I are just bonkers. Yeah. 
that could be it. That could be it. So um, when I, this is just a normal seam. Yeah. And then when I turn this around, so let me lay it flat. So it looks twisted. Twisted. And John's going, oh, I hope she's got this right. Yeah, I trust you. And then when we turn like so, can you see now that edge is all nice and neat and I don't have to worry about the binding. Yes. Um, I may even do a bit of top stitching, but I might do that. Because that edge stays like that, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, doesn't, doesn't because it's it, just yeah. an overlapped edge. Yeah. Okay. And then what we need to do is to go all the way around the piece. Oh, God, now. Oh. No, 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 it's good. It's good to go. Amanda from Suffolk. Morning, John and CL. I'm a dog groomer and have made a few dog coats and fleece suits. You need to measure from the collar to the base of the tail and then it cuts out. I presume oh. that's how you measure your dog. From the what happens if it's got a really long tail though? Yeah. What, well, you let me know got more, like Amanda. A, a sausage dog that's like really long but really narrow. Oh, to the base of the tail. To the base of the tail. Didn't read it properly. Yeah, but also we need to know our circumference, don't yeah. we? I don't know. You carry on. Okay. <laughs> it's it's, it's all a mystery, isn't it's a, it? You've not got a dog, have you? No, I want a dog. Do I sit you? in my park near my studio and I look at dogs. Yeah. And I think, I wish I was... But your more... lifestyle, it doesn't... It, you, no, you know what I mean, because I've, you're out and busy and... I've random. joined something called Borrow My Doggy, so that you can... Oh, yes, you can borrow a dog for the day yeah. and things, yeah. Because I look at dogs and I think, oh, I, I wish sometimes I was more dog, so you could just be happy. Yes, oh, skipping yes. Skipping and... Uh, because I like cats because they're so independent, they can just do what they want. But I do like... Because I, I feel a bit weird. I think, oh, I really want to go for a walk. But I don't really like just walking on my own. If you've got a dog... Yeah, yeah. And more people talk to you when you've got a dog. It's a good way to... Meet people. What's how Davina to meet McCormick, her chaps, husband, wasn't it? isn't it? Was it? Yeah. Right, so the bed... Oh, their bed sizes, not coat sizes. Coat sizes, small to medium, large to extra large, double X to three X, and four X to five X. Now, this is a three way. X that I've cut out. Okay. So it's quite a big dog. Substantial. Yeah, so right. I've just top stitched across here just to control that. Okay, perfect. And again, I'm going through a few layers. Now, I want to sew with my fleece on the underside because it kind of creeps and moves. So the Juki, this has got, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think this has got like an integrated feed. It does, actually. Gary so, will tell us more about yeah, that it, it kind of isn't creeping as I'm sewing. But if you're yeah. sewing with a machine that doesn't have one of these, have the stable side up. Are most okay. so I'm not going to go all the way around this piece but I'm just going to show you what I've done to the belt so I'm doing a kind of basting stitch which is going to get hidden by my binding of course because you're not bagging out so you literally so now have you got wrong sides together then yes yeah wrong sides together now my only feeling about using this fleece yeah is I would probably have fleece on the inside so they're nice the and cozy well, you can do with them. Oh, yeah, because you can't turn it round, can you? Because your Velcro's on one side. Yeah. But I think you could have <coughs> that one there, the paw print. With the you fleece could... on the inside. Yeah, Ooh, nice. That'd be nice. So this but then is... you could, you'd have to do this method, wouldn't you? You wouldn't be able to do turning. No, you wouldn't be able to turn it round. But you do exactly this, this method. Um, oh, hello. So can you see how the, the foot just hopped up then? I mean, I know Gary's going to explain it better. Yeah. So uh, that's because this machine is sensing that I'm doing something and I've actually got the pedal back to front yes so that I don't keep using the cutter yeah uh, Norma says uh, Gary was <laughs> in a very funny only fools and horses sketch ah see we're so, not crazy people. no no but I think it's fantastic that our viewers will just go oh I know what that is Gaddy so uh, don't judge me guys sewing super fast so this is quite a time-consuming process, doing all of this. So you have to go all the way around the piece, and then you've also got to go all the way around the belt pieces, which I've already done. So you've right. got a very long belt. Right. OK? So um, once we've gone all the way around, I might as well go all the way around. You might as well, because it's only 18 minutes past. You might want to show you a bias binder maker oh, as well. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'll whiz round the outside. But you would have done your two ends the same. You've only done this one so yeah, far, haven't you? Yeah, that's just... Done the other one the same. Yeah, I'm not going to do it now. No, right. So, um, yeah, I like this oh, machine. I've got stock warnings already. Which one, For Paul? which one? The green water-resistant one is limited. That's this one. Ooh. 
And the red water resistant is even more limited. See, I think for a kid's mat, or even for a grown-up, you know, like those classic ones from Cornwall? Yeah, oh, they yeah, call, like, like salt. Uh, galoshes and southwesters, you mean, yeah. like that. I think that would look cute. I think I could wear that. OK, so look, so this one is limited. When we say limited, how much, Paul? Let's have a look. We'll just put the graphics through and have a look. There's what, sorry? 80% has gone. 80% wow. of that one has gone. The red one. 90% of the red one's gone already. That's at 11.19 live on air. Is, is that for people or for dogs? Let well, us know what know. you're Let's know. You're buying for your dogs or for people. I suppose it depends how much are most people buying, do we know? Oh, two metres. Two metres or two units? Oh, a metre. Most people have bought a metre. Most people bought a metre. So, uh, so that's that one. And then I might as well do the blue one while I'm here. And um, There's 50% of the blue one left. Just be careful, because we've only showed it to you 20 minutes ago. Wow. No, don't leave it in your basket. That's what the I'm saying. Do people need to check out, then? Yeah, need to check out. They do. Thank you. I'll just come over to you. It's easier, isn't it? A nice, cosy little. I should be... Aww. <laughs> right, which one? With the black background? All right, there's only 50% of this one left. Colourful paws on black. 3.99. Lots of that in baskets, right? Okay, carrying on. Okay, so you know if you're going to make a mac, you could do a mac and then line it with some fleece. You could. And you It'd be could very put... hot. But no, like for you know, kind of dog walks. Or uh, like people who go not mount, not serious mountaineering. No, people who but like when go, you go on walking holidays. Yeah, like me. Well, well, yeah, oh, yes, like you. Well, Wendy, Wendy's um, still celebration. Wendy, our um, I don't know what I think she's called. Design Creative director. Creative manager. The what? The creative manager. Creative manager. She, um, she, it was her big birthday. She was 40 this year. And her husband... <laughs> don't make that funny noise. She was 40 this year. And her husband has arranged all these different things. So she loves to take that. So she's going to go and see Take That. She's been on holiday. She's going to Venice this weekend. And one of them is like a romantic weekend in a cottage in like Ooh. northern England. So one of these would be fantastic for that weekend, wouldn't it? Okay, so now we're going to finish around the outside. Right. And uh, there's a couple of ways that we can do this. We can buy some bias binding, but yeah. then we, like I said, we're going to have lots of offcuts. So I have used this to make bias binding. Okay. And um, I guess your quilters are kind of comfortable with this, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Well, they normally do it on the straight. Quilters do their binding on the straight. Do they? Yeah, because there's very seldom a curve. Curves. It's only when they do the, the wavy edge ones. Most of the time it's on straight. This is on the bias. Yeah. Okay. It has I'm, to be, doesn't it? I'm going to show you, because we've got a curve, I'm going to show you a couple of things that we can do. Right. So when you, um, and this is the one thing that people get the most confused about, when you are joining bias strips, in order to make the seam look straight, like that, yeah. your actual seam is on the diagonal is at a kind of 95 degree, it's at a 90 degree angle. Yeah, the yeah? seam's 45 degree. Yeah. And We're the two fabrics go. The two fabrics are at 90 yeah. degrees. I'm not picking on you, just I saying. <laughs> um, but this kind of, especially with my students, they're kind of like, well, why are we going to do that? Yeah, why are you going to do that? Because if we sew them straight, we end up with a mitre. So we end up with the fabrics going at 90 degrees. Yes. So you always join bias pieces like this. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, this. Bias by the maker, which is in yeah. the moment. Uh, these are, I've had some of these for years and years and yeah. years, and I really like them. But a lot of people do struggle with them. So I'm going to show you this way. Perfect. And then I'll show you a, a, Another way. a speedy way. Okay. Because this is a nice, strong linen. Um, Cotton. Lin Awesome. Everyone's having trouble today, I do apologise. Well, what, are we in the new moon or something? Well, so as I'm saying, I think there must be something happening because yeah. there's, there's something clashing. Some planets are colliding, aren't they, today? Oh, it's because we all went out raving last night. Well, I didn't. <gasps> we weren't supposed to stay that, were we? Yeah. Well, you obviously didn't invite me. No. I was, um, I was travelling. 
So I'm just going to join my little seam on my two pieces. So you can make a really long piece of bias um, strip, strip yeah. without having a lot of fabric. You can do it on a square. There is a method, I don't know if... Oh, we did it the other day. The square. Where you sew it into a tube and yeah. a tube and then start cutting. Yeah, we did it the other day. I tend to always get myself a bit confused. Uh, yes, I do as well. And so you have I, to put it... Yeah. I'm just easier just folding the fabric in half and just slicing up. So that goes like that. Yeah. And then we just um, trim off these little triangles. So if I could have the iron and the ironing board, please, my stroke. Oh, don't know, did you put it back up or is it still on cool? Oh, yeah, we'll definitely want a little bit of uh, yeah. steam in here. So, um, oh, this is nifty board. I, might I know. Have got one of these. Coming two different sizes. What's the other size, John? Uh, is it bigger, the other one? No, it's smaller. The other one's smaller than that, yeah. Although a smaller one is quite nifty by the yeah. machine, isn't it, for just little yeah. bits. So um, the bias binder maker kind of rolls everything in. And a little trick that I use for this right. is to get it through right at the beginning. So I'm not sure if I've just blocked myself. No, there you go. So if I cut this to a sort of point, it helps me to feed it into yes. the maker. So it goes in like so. Now, do you know the very, very first series of the sewing bee, mm -hmm. somebody used one of these tools and because people didn't really know what they were for, the manufacturer ran out. Oh, wow. In the UK. Like there was a kind of, you know, British shortage on. We're not going to run out. We've got loads. Have you? Yeah. Enough? Well, depends you how good your know. demonstration is, really. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a one. So I might not have cut this quite small enough, but I'm going to show you, uh, just get this lined up. And this is why some people don't like this tool, because if you don't get everything cut correctly or folded at the beginning. Yeah. So when you buy it, it's got a little set of measurements on it. There we go. There you go. That tells you. So quite often the first bit is a little bit tricky. Yeah. But the nifty thing about this is you kind of slide it along like this, press as it comes out, and you've got Find a really nice... I think I've got asbestos fingers from pressing for so yeah. long. Yeah. So sometimes the seam, you might need to work that a little bit just to bring that through. And then you've got your um, bias binding. Perfect. And that's finished at an inch, isn't it? That one's 25 yes, millimetres. 25 mil. Now, if you don't have one of these, or I've got a lot of students that say, oh, I've got one, but I can't get on with it. This is how um, I've often done a bias. So a little bit like making a bag strap. I'll fold it in half. The downside of doing it this way is it's easy to stretch. Yes. And it's not but quite this is the way as it, we, we didn't have bias binding makers when I was at college. This is the way we had to learn to make... No, not because I'm that old. We just didn't have... Well, I see my arm. Well, I've got mine from when I was at college, which is 30 years ago. This year, we're going to have a reunion because it's 30 years since we graduated. No. Hang on. You know how old I no, am. No, no, no. I'm working at how many years since I graduated from Wimbledon because I did a degree before that, didn't I? Yeah, so greedy. We could be here a while. So... 36. <laughs> I... For, 36 years. Did I graduate 36 years ago? Hang on. No, it must be more than that. I'm, that, I'm a lot older than you. No, but then, no. hang on. I graduated from my first college in 81. 91, 101, 111. That's when he graduated. What? <laughs> What'd you say? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Hurry up and do the bass band. I've got to do a recap. Oh, all right. So you can do it either way. So you folded it in half. Yeah. And then folded it into the middle, yeah, and then you've and got then your bias it, that yeah. way, OK? All right, stop there, because I'm going to recap, and then we'll come back and we'll okay. go. All right? Uh, I'll take the patterns, and I'll take the fabrics, and I'll take the fabrics, and I'll take the fabrics. First pattern is the one that CL used, which is this one. Very, very popular. Oh, it's upside down. There you go. Eight pounds and 49 pence. Remember, that's got beds, uh, coats, leash, and a little um, a poo bag holder. Well, that's what they call them, isn't it? When you take your dog for a walk. Because that's the one thing I can't deal with, is doing that. You can make doggy tires in two bags. 
Oh, yes. 849, this one. This one's for little dogs. Oh, it goes for extra large, that one, though. They just haven't taken a picture of an extra large one, that's all. But look, I love it. I love, look, look. So you can do a stripy Breton one. You do one with a little frill on it. Do one with a plique on it. Eight pounds and 49 pence. I think little Paul needs a holiday. Right, fabric-wise. Blue. This is the beautiful, this is gorgeous because we can imagine this being used for so Water resistant fabric. It's PU covered. No, hang on. It's PU coated. coated. That's it, PU coated. That's it. There's only three meters left and 20 people have got in their baskets. So lots of you will be um, getting very disappointed about that one. Red. Oh, it's gone. Green. Well, green, I thought green was the most popular. Right, there's nine units left, four and a half metres, but ten of you have got it in your basket. Right, that's going to go. Right, then we've got the fleecy. That's all, that's all the waterproofy ones gone. Right, the fleecy ones. This is colourful on black. 3 99 Colourful paws on black, fleeced fabric. Load to that one in the basket. Now, I'm not surprised somebody's bought four metres. That's what I'd buy and cover my bed in it so the cats can sleep on the bed. OK, uh, then I've got the dog and bone in blue. Very popular. They're all popular. All brand new today. Then I've got dog and bone in grey. Nice, lovely grey, that one, isn't it? I wonder why we haven't done any with Kaffir cats. Because it's a dog coat, I suppose. That's why, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. Great. Dog and bone. Hmm? You take the cat for a walk. No, but I do have... They, my cats do have very, very expensive tastes where blankets are concerned. Uh, 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 two lovely ladies made me a, a lovely blanket made out of fleece like this, and they'd embroidered Norman and Nelly's name on it and everything. Uh, colourful paws on cream. It's not cream, it's white. Then I've got dog and bone on black. Very popular. You see, I can see, I can see like a fleecy that people would wear, like a dog, you know, people who take dog, dogs walking and things at lunchtime. Not just lunchtime, it's their job, you know. Now I've got plain colours, plain blue. Royal. Sorry. Paul would make a Superman costume out of this one. Other super eels are available, but are they in that colour? Then we've got red. So that'd be a cape, that'd be your pants. No, the weren't the pants yellow? I can't remember. Isn't that mighty red? Okay. Well, they've got a yellow S. The yes is yellow, isn't it? Moving up. Uh, green, this is nice. The linings, you mean? Wait for the graphics to come in. There you go. Bottle green anti pill fleece fabric, 399 half meter, 150 centimeter wide. And then black. I've got two linings to show. I've got the line, and Paul can run them through afterwards, but I've got the what colours today? Green and black. No, we, we haven't shown any of them. No. Okay, I've got the, the lining fabric, which isn't lining fabric, it's our, it's our solid colours that we uh, do. The, yeah, black. We didn't do the blue and did you? Okay, the blue and the blue and the grey green have already gone through. So there's the black, and there's the red. Uh, the blue and green are listed underneath me. No, I didn't think we had. And then the blue one. See, I'll have finished the demonstration at this rate. It's only halfway through the hour. Don't go too fast. Do you want to do the green one again? Green lining there. It's not lining. It's our cotton fabric that we has as, have as our um, plain colours. 3.25 for half a metre. Uh, if you need to know any questions, just let um, me know and we'll ask you. Okey-doke. 
Right. Now, controversially, I'm going to do this a way that's unusual. Oh, OK. Maybe your quilt. I don't think your quilters do it this what way. What were you just sewing a minute ago? Then I could hear you sewing and My sewing. My belt. Oh, OK. Yeah. It's a long line. Yeah. Um, so I haven't got enough to go all the way around here because I wasn't going to do all of it. Yeah. But you can see the benefit of a bias in that I can actually make it curve. Yes. So I can really smooth that, whereas a straight one would end up with wrinkly bits. So most people will always sew this to the right side and then flip it to the inside. Mm -hmm. And quilters often hand sew, don't they? Yes. But dressmakers, when they try this, find that then they can either see this stitching or they're trying to stitch in the ditch. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I use all the time, which is that I'm going to sew it to the wrong side, then turn it over, and then I can really control my top stitching. Perfect. So we're going to start by opening out our bias. Right. Leave yourself enough for a little join. Little corner. Where's that going to go? Eventually, that end. I'll let you carry on. Okay. I'll just fold it over. Yeah. Like that. Okay, perfect. But rather than starting with a fold, yes. I always come back and fold it in because I might want to trim a bit later. Right. Okay. So um, I'm going to pin, and my crease is going to form my seam allowance. Right. So as I'm coming around here, I'm lining up my edges and I'm sort of manipulating the bias into a curve. Yeah. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Because I want this to be applied slightly stretched because this inner fold is going to sit here. Mm -hmm. I don't want a baggy bias. No. No one wants that. No. I've actually got a book on dog coats. At home? Yeah. Why? Because when I first started teaching, I thought that maybe people might want to make dog coats. When you're sort of researching, I was like, yeah, maybe people... And then so I bought this book on dog coats, and then um, I used it for research when we've um, kind of looked at dog coats in my previous job. And um, there's got, like, tutus for dogs and... Aww. All that kind of stuff. And then nothing really happened with it. I did a lot of dog mannequin research. <laughs> Dog mannequins, crikey. In the, in the, uh, I usually judge the uh, dog competition mm -hmm. in Long Comp, is it Long Compton I do? And what the first class is always the, um, the first category is always fancy dress. Aww. And then they can take them off then. So what are you judging? Just. I just judge the best costume. Okay. But then I have to do, uh, Best puppy, best male dog, best female dog. But you're a cat person. Yes, I know, but I'm a celebrity. Ish. Of course you're a celebrity. Yeah. I was starstruck when I met you. Yeah, now look. <laughs> Mind you, did you see my Facebook thing? Out for, you know Hayley in the office? Yeah. I first worked with her for the first time six years ago, and she put on Facebook, I'm working with John Scott tonight. My life is now complete. Aww. And now look at her, the way she treats me now. You're mean. She treats you very well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you pin that in place around okay. the curve. And now we're going to stitch. So you can see that there's a little bit of, it's got yeah. a little bit of tension in yeah. here. It was like in this room. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to use the crease line that I put in as my stitching line. Right. So I'm not really following a seam allowance. Yeah. And then um, I'm going to try not to sew over the pins, but... I can't guarantee I won't. No. Thinking what machine ACL using? It's the Juki coming up in the next hour. Gary's here to do the Juki. Gary! Uh, so, <laughs> Gary! To do the sewing machine and to do the overlocker. Remember last time we did the overlocker, it sold out. Okay. It's just talking to me. It's warning me that there was a lump <coughs> coming up ahead. I think that's sort of what it does. Oh, is it? Yeah. This is why I don't sell sewing machines, because yeah. I'm like, is it? I think it sort of does that. So this method of putting on a bias is really nice, because you've got this creased edge. Do quilters put the creases in? No, they don't, because that's the way I would always do it as a dressmaker. And they don't, uh, quilters don't do it like that. Wow! 
why? It's so much easier. No, cause also because they're on straight normally. So what they do is they fold it over. Yeah. And stitch the raw edge to edge, then fold all of it over. Yeah. And take it over to the other side. But I do that as a clean finish on a neckline. It's called a bias facing. Mm. Um, and I quite like that. If I'm doing floaty things. Did you check your nails in the No, I wasn't. I thought I. Like this for our finish. Oh, I checked that. No, I knocked myself on the screw oh, sorry. and it felt like I was bleeding. So I wanted to make sure I didn't come back in and ruin oh, the dog. Okay. Yeah. I feel bad now, don't you? No. <laughs> I could see there was no blood. Right, so. Oh, you've hurt yourself. Yeah, that's why I was checking. I wasn't oh. checking my nails. You know me, I wouldn't want to check no. my nails. So I am I'm just gonna trim a little bit of this away. Or everything, or just the a teeny, it's like a smidge. Yeah. Because the fleece is quite fat yeah. as I turn this around I don't want it to have um, not enough space okay Paul's just checking you're all right yes. he, he cares I'm, I, I'm fine Paul thank you it has to put it in the book that's what it is <laughs> oh it's just as well I like you John yes it, Matt, Matt little Paul's written in the book how you were touching his muscles when you were trying the jacket on him earlier <laughs> Do you know what I did? Oh no, is it rude? <laughs> no, it's not rude. So, um, and I think it was the end of 2017, not last year, I was working on um, Cinderella for the Matthew Bourne Company and we were refitting costumes, so it was being remounted. And um, I was fitting this dancer and he was, he was lovely and he's considered mature. He's like not even 30. Yeah, but things mature, yeah. And so we were fitting a tailcoat and I haven't, sometimes it's like your inside voice. And you forget. <laughs> well, it's because we're used to working on our own in work crews, and so you talk to the mannequin. But also, I had a lot of dancers fitting, so we were trying to work out all of them had tightness oh, around no. the bicep. <laughs> so I was fitting, and I was kind of looking, and my tailor was there, and I was like, and I went, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you've worked out. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, I have, I'm rather proud of it. Oh, little and Paul's then, upset you didn't make that noise when you tried the jacket on. I did, but he was he was busy working, yeah. so he didn't notice. Yeah. I was rather impressed with his guns. Yeah. That's well, why I was don't. stroking him. But yeah, sometimes like, and I could see the tailor and she was like, do you normally talk to artists like yeah. that? Oops. So um, we go all the way around and then all the way around the outside of the dog coat. Yeah, yeah. So you have to do this before we put the belt on. Yeah. And then we roll this to the inside. Well, it's not to the inside, it's to the outside. Yes. And this forms a little bit of a kind of jaunty trim. Yeah, it's nice. It's you nice, could almost it? do it in a complete, you've done it in the green and the green. Yeah, I did think But you could do it in the black and the red, or you, yeah. could, you could really uh, play around with it, couldn't you? So, because this is now the right side of the dog coat, I can make sure that my top stitching is really nice. So you still not turned the corner, you still haven't turned the corner in then? No, I'm no. just going to do that in a second. Okay. So this is the problem a lot of times people end up seeing a bit of this yes, or yeah. you're trying to stitch in the ditch. So this is just like, if you're going to do a top stitch, make a feature of it and sew it from the top side. Yeah. And then we just want to encase this edge here. So we're just going to tuck a little bit in. And I kind of normally, this is a technical word, kind of smush. 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 <laughs> Not kutch. No. It was something I, was Definitely a smush. I discovered this week when I was teaching. It was like a new word that I kept saying and they were all laughing at me. Aww. What are you doing? I'm getting out the thing, other things you might be using in a minute. Do you think you use one of those on it? Well, it depends on the time. Maybe we'll make a little dog poo pannier. Oh. So on Tuesday, the winning dog coat that was made for yep. the tent, she made a little kind of buckle pannier oh, okay. for poo bags oh, so that the true. dog carries... But that, that's... Oh, it goes on the dog? Yeah. Oh. Around the belt. Eh? So you could... We're going to use Velcro, but... Yeah, yeah no, no, I've got the Velcro use, ready. Yeah, we could use the buckle clips yeah. and we could just have... I think there was some elastic. I was going yeah, to, like, there. maybe whip up a pannier. Okay, so on this one, I'll just show you. you, you while you're... Oh, well, hang on. We'll do that, we'll do yeah. that first. Do we're that just going to... I'm going to show you... Because this is a little bit of top stitching that we want to do carefully. Yeah. And... Um, <coughs> Depending on how 
carefully you've pressed it depends on what guide. Now, like you, I've always just had an eye focus in because we have to do that at college for mm. so long. So I'm focusing on this inner edge rather than focusing on my seam allowance because of the way I pressed it. So whatever works for you guys, it may be that you've got a focus here, but we're going to see this. Yeah. And can you see, because I'm going around this corner, the tendency is curve. The tendency is to make the curve straight to get it to the needle. What we want to do is just kind of half lift up and, and keep the fabric curved. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a very subtle difference. Yeah, because sometimes when you're sewing an inside seam, mm -hmm. you snip it and you make it into a straight, like when you're doing bag exactly. making and things like that, but not so much when you're doing bias binding. No, and with a neckline or something, if I was to do this, yeah. I've now stretched yeah. my neckline. So yeah, it's not, you know, I'm trying to be careful, but um, we do want to crack on. Don't yeah. we? So we whiz all the way up here. And um, this depends on whether or not you like seeing top stitching. For something like a dog coat or something oh, no, I think, yes. quite utilitarian, yeah. I think this actually adds to it. Could you, this might be a bit controversial oh. now, could you make the, the binding out of the fleece? No. Why not? Because you are going to regret trying to turn that around. As oh, you okay. fold it over, yeah, okay. it's going to be really thick. And it yeah. doesn't really have a bias, so it's just going to be a bit... Okay, just thought I'd ask. Yeah, no. Just the one question. I, I did think about it. Yeah, no, for a second. Yeah, we haven't got to the, we'll do the velcro when we get to the strap. We'll do the strap next. So we could, if you really love your dog, you could use some offcuts of the Liberty. So... Uh, oh, yes, that'd be like make it look very Paul Smith, wouldn't it? Yeah. Like? So that's it, and that's what you would oh, do. Oh, look, nice. Now, I would then come in and use my iron with some steam to shrink any excess yes, here. Yes, so you don't have any little yeah. ruckles there. Right, now the strap that goes across okay. it, I've noticed that there's... Um... So I put lines on the underside yeah. just to give me a little quick clue. So I also put a notch where these marks are. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that is the lower part of the strap. So the strap you would have finished in the same way. Yeah. So you will have gone all the way around and there's a centre mark. So just one little thing about cutting this in fleece. Can you see I put a seam here? Yeah. That's because if I was to use the width of the fabric, which is economical, I'm going across the greatest direction of stretch. Right. Whereas I used along the selvage and I didn't want to waste a massive because it's quite a long piece. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So yes, I yeah. seamed it because I want to keep some tension so in the So you fabric. don't want it to be the stretchy one, you want it to be the more stable one. Yeah. So you do it the length of the fabric rather than across the fabric. Yeah. Okay? Perfect. What was that the Velcro in? I've got the black one. Black sew in or sew on. Velcro. 349, you get a meter. I've got the white one there. You may this is Velcro branded. Get two boxes. Oh, you need two boxes. You need two boxes. Say so seven pounds, you need two boxes of those. Not yet, because that's nothing to do with this. OK, yeah. so obviously I haven't finished all of this edge, but that's... Three minutes, OK. That's your belt on, right. OK? And then you top stitch that in place. Now, the way that I would do this... So, hang on, is this the out... This is the outside, isn't it, or the inside? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Um, the way that I would do this is I would stitch in the ditch through that little crease there, rather than stitch back on my on top stitch. On the edge. Stitching. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So, it, so, there's definitely going to be a bit of a lip there, then. With, yeah, as in, that's OK. Gonna, don't or sew this edge here. You could sew that edge if you wanted to. And then it looks like you've got double top yeah, stitching double on top both stitching. sides. Um, so once that's on, then you can start finishing the um, coat with the Velcro. Now, again, maybe controversial. Oh, yes. But I'm going to show you a um, sort of costumey thing. So normally you put the spiky side of the Velcro on top. Yes, the and male. The male half. And then um, that would rub against your skin. Oh, right. So your poor little doggy might get me. Yeah. So you do it the other way, you put the fluffy. I put the fluffy. So you work out which is going to be the underside and then you, 
you've got your marks that you would mark from your lining. So when I do this, you've got some, oh yeah, I, want to I always put, partly it's, it's kind of annoying as a costumer because it can irritate the costume, but it's like, do I save the costume or the or artist? The actress, yeah. Because let's say you overlap. Nothing worse than ammonia actor yeah. or actress. If I've got the male side here, and um, my doggy puts on a little bit of weight, I've just got rough Velcro. Yeah. Whereas if the soft side, side is on top. Yeah. yeah. So I, you get that kind of lined up and there are very careful marks. So it's the same for all four pieces. Yeah. I'm gonna show you at the top. So what we've got is, um, again, this overlaps like so. Yeah. So I'm gonna have my Spiky side here. Yeah. Spiky just like side I've here. Done. And and fluffy side there. Yeah. And then it closes up like that. So if you, when you put it on your dog, if you do have to release it a little bit, then the, it's only going to be the fluffy side that hit, that goes against your dog's skin. But particularly around the neck, I wouldn't want any roughness no. for the dog. So you've got the two fluffy bits are going to go on here, and we literally going. I'm just going to sew one. Yeah. This We've got is, a minute to see this those, is so. going to be just top stitched. Now, the great thing about Velcro is it's not going to fray, so no. we don't have to worry about finishing the top edge. And um, yeah, so it wasn't letting me sew because I had the foot up, which is great, like especially for me teaching beginners because they're always sewing with the foot up. Yeah. So this I'm gets. To. Well, you can on most machines, and then they get a jam. Yeah. And then. And then we just literally can turn the corner, pivot. Unlike my pocket, I'm not going to count the stitches. No. <coughs> Bless you. All right. Perfect. And then you do that with all one, two, four pieces. Yeah. In, you've got two halves to each piece. So there's two here and then two around the tummy. Okay. And you could do a little bit of applique on the back or do something whatever you want, fun. Really, yeah, but it's a little blank canvas, really. Perfect. Cool. I'm going to have to say goodbye. Uh, I'll speak to you later. Speak to you later. Take care. Uh, right. Uh, let's get on. Oh. I've left the pattern behind, sorry. Well done, Ben. Pattern first. So, you've got the uh, baskets, you've got the leash, you've got the little poo bag to keep your poo bags in. You've got the coats in the different sizes. You've got the little muff, what's that one there? That's a tiny little one, isn't it? Eight pounds and 49 pence, they're all in that packet, all in there. The other pattern, which is very, very, very limited now, Hello, new buyers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It goes from extra to extra large, look. Measure from the collar to the base of the tail. Eight pounds and 49 pence. Okay, right, fabrics. Well, all those have sold out, they've gone now. All the PVC ones have sold out. These are my linings. So let's start this one. Right, here we go. So we've got black, bright colours on black, bright paws on black. <coughs> Very limited. 3 99 We've got dog and bone on blue. It's lovely, isn't it? You see, I don't think you just need to keep it. For, I think lots of people will buy this to make themselves a <coughs> soft toy or uh, dog and bone in Greg, or a nice fleecy, because this is really lovely fleece. $3.99. Great dog bone. Oh, it's bone and pro. Not dog, not a dog and bone. Sorry, my bad. Well, I, I was just following what a producer said to me. You did. Uh, right on white or cream. 3.99 for half a meter. Then we've got the uh, one, the dog and bone and paws on black. Three 
three ninety nine. Then I've got the plain colours, the royal blue. Oh. Three ninety nine, half a meter. It's lovely, isn't it? Okay, then I've got the red. Lovely, rich red, that one, isn't it? What are you doing, my trolley, Gally? <laughs> Gally's trying to nick my trolley. See, now he's got all his accessories. He's got his bunting and everything in there. Uh, Gary's coming up in the next hour with the dukey. You can't wait. Uh, right, green, bottle green. <coughs> Thank goodness I've only got two graphics in the next hour, let's say that. <coughs> Excuse me, and last but not least, the black. £3.99. Please make sure you check out your baskets, all of those. As you saw, the other ones, the, the waterproof ones, the showerproof ones, sold out like that. Do not go anywhere, because in five minutes' time, Gary uh, from Duke is here. We are doing the overlocker first, and then we are doing the sewing machine. Remember, last time Gary was in, the overlocker sold out completely. We had to get the same amount back in on the same day. They sold out completely. We've got more in now. I don't want you to miss out today. It's a fantastic machine, because it goes whoop, and it threads itself, whoosh, and it threads itself. And the sewing machine, you've just seen CL use the sewing machine. It's a fabulous sewing machine. So, uh, Oh, okay then, fine. I, I can't, can't hear you very well, Andy. Uh, so, uh, don't go anywhere. Five minutes from now, and we will be with Gary and Juki. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing, work, we create and love. There are many different ways you can buy from us here at the Sewing Quarter. You can order from us by calling our free phone number at 0800 112 4433 and talk to the team at our UK based call centre. Alternatively, there are other ways you can buy from us. You can go online and shop through our website at www.sewingquarter.com. You can even watch the show there and shop as you go. You can check out as many times as you like throughout the day and only pay a small fee of £2.95 postage and packaging for the whole day. We also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all products excluding custom-cut fabric. Our friendly UK-based team will help guide you through every step. <laughs> 